very good morning everyone so today we'll have a quick look on uh, how to access the student portal or uh, rather the student login received from the narsi Munja university for the distance programs first we'll open our google we'll type over here student zone nmims we have to click on the first link will land you to the student zone page wherein you have to enter your SAP ID or the student ID and the password received from your university over the email. There's another way as well which I'll guide you. You can type online.nmims.edu which is the official website of the distance programs. You can scroll down at the bottom of the page. You'll find an option of student zone. Just click on that. Again, it will land you onto the same page. So we'll enter our SAP ID received from the university and the password that we have got over the email. This is for one of the old students. In case you are a new user, you will get a page somewhat like this, wherein it will ask you to enter your old password and generate a new password. So following these parameters, you can make any combination of the new password and accordingly save that. The portal will log you out and it will ask you to log in again with the new password. Once you log in again, it will land you onto this page wherein it will ask you to update certain details about your personal information and the contact information. New students will have to note that in the personal details section, they can only enter the first name of their mother and father. Once done, go on to the contact information. You need to update your address in all these three fields address line 1, address line 2, address line 3. The PIN code would be automatically picked up once you were taking the enrollment with us. Moreover, if you wish to change your email address or even your contact number, you can do it over here. Once done, you need to click on update information. After that, by default, it will take you to the section of the dashboard. Now, over here you can see your details are coming on the top, which is your email ID, the contact number which is registered, the program name, and the SAP ID or the student ID, which is your unique ID or the roll number we can say. And even the program validity, the validity for which the program would be valid. As we can see, this particular student is for Diploma into Finance Management. The portal is similar to for all the students which are your MBA as well. The UI remains the same, the options remain the same. Now, when we talk about the dashboard, the dashboard gives us a quick overview of what we have lined up in the coming three to four days. For example, we have any session scheduled for. So as we can see, there's a lecture lined up or there was a lecture lined up for 6th of April, information system for managers. The recording would be available. and so on. These are the previous recordings which have been conducted so far. The recording for 5th of April, for 4th of April. Moreover, when we scroll down, we can see there are certain assignments which are pending and the due date happens to be 29th of May. The dashboard will give us a quick overview about our assignments or maybe lectures or even upcoming exams which are scheduled for. Moving forward, we have the option of academic calendar, which gives us an idea of which lectures are scheduled on what date and what time. So as you can see, the entire month is being represented over here and there are certain days having different colors marked. 
these different colors are for the tracks tracks are basically the lectures which are happening maybe over the weekdays over the weekends or maybe common for all which is happening seven days in a week the blue ones if i talk about the blue ones the blue lectures are basically weekend slow track these lectures are happening over the weekends saturdays and sundays so if i have to attend this lecture i just need to click over here i'll get a small pop up coming up over here there would be an option of to join the session once i click over here it will navigate me to the zoom page of nmims wherein i can directly join the session if i have subscribed for the live lectures if not the same would be uploaded in the form of the session recordings. If I click it over here, it will take me to the recording version of this particular class, which will be uploaded in the next 48 hours. I'll just give you a small walkthrough. Moreover, if you want, we can also increase the speed of this lecture. Let us suppose you're finding it a little boring. So you can increase the speed to maybe 1.25, 1.5 or 2x or even slow it down as per your requirement. So I'll just increase the speed. So this was one of the way to find your live lectures and the recordings which will be uploaded. Now you can find an option of my courses. The option of my courses gives you an overview of what subjects you have in the current semester. By default you have six subjects in every semester. So as you can see the student is having six subjects to cover up. Now, if I have to find the PPT or maybe the ebook for business economics, I'll just click on the option of resources. Now, what I'm seeing right now is a combination of videos and PDFs. If I need to filter it down, I just need to select what type of file am I choosing? Do I need to view the PDFs? Do I need to view the videos? I have to select PDF. The PDFs will give me an overview of the ebook as well as the PPTs which are uploaded by the faculty in every lecture. Business economics course material. This is basically my ebook, or rather, the ebook of the hard copy which students received. Once I click it over here, it will open the ebook in an alternate tab. It is having 344 pages. I can accordingly scroll it down, whatever chapter I need to see. I can check it over here. If I need to zoom it further, I can do that as well. Now, if I have to check the PPTs which are uploaded by the faculty, I can do that as well. Session number one by Professor Harshad. If I have to view this, I just need to click it over here. It will again open the content into the new tab. So this was the PPT which was used by this professor in the first lecture.
you must be able to see that there are two session number ones. One was covered by Professor Harshad and the second was covered by Professor Shelley. Why we have these two uh, P, uh, PPTs uploaded over here is because these are from two different tracks. One may be from the weekend track and the other one would, would be for the weekday track. So whichever track the uh, student is following, the student can accordingly view that PPT for that specific faculty. Now, if you wish to view the recordings, just select the option of video over here and you can find all the recordings that have been uploaded so far for this particular subject. Students, please remember every session contains one chapter. So session number one, if I talk about, it will be containing chapter number one. If I talk about session number two, it will be containing the second chapter of business economics and so on. Following the track is the choice of the student, whatever timeline is suiting to their preference. This is this was one of the ways to find the session videos. We have one more alternate way. If you click on the option of session videos towards your left, it will again land you to the option of the recordings. Here also you can filter the choice of the recordings which you want to see, maybe by subject maybe by track or maybe by a professor. Now, in case you have not subscribed to the live lectures and you have certain doubts and concerns. So we have an option of asking these queries from the faculty. The option will you will find once you open the recording. You can see an option of ask faculty. Once you click it over here, You'll find a drop down. It will ask you what kind of a query it is. I'm posting this query to a faculty. I need to select faculty. After that, I need to mention my query. Whatever query I'm putting it in, once done, I just need to click on the option of post query. This query will directly reach out to the faculty and the faculty shall get back to me within 48 hours. Now, if you want to check your assignments, just go to the option of exams. Don't click. Just place your cursor over here. Click on the option of assignments. Now, you can see a timer running. That is basically the reverse timeline or the, rather the time available before the submission. We have six subjects and the question file for each subject is mentioned over here, June 2022 question file. Once I click it over here, these are the questions I need to cover. Question number one, question number two, and question number three divided into two parts, A and B. Every subject would be having 30 marks of assignments, two questions for 10, 10 marks each and one question divided into two parts of five marks each. I can save it. I can download it into my laptop and accordingly start working on the answers. I can even view the assignment guidelines. What are the do's and don'ts I need to follow? So these are the guidelines that students mandatory needs to understand before they start working on the assignments. This is downloadable. You can click it over here and download it in your laptop. If you need to upload the assignment, just click on this option. Click on choose file. Please ensure that the file size is not exceeding 5 MB and the file is saved into the PDF format before you are uploading it. Once you have chosen the desired file, you need to select all these checkboxes and then click on the option of submit assignments. Once done, 
this will show you status from not submitted to submitted and highlighted with the option of green. Similarly, you can download the question files for the other subjects as well by just clicking on these options. Now, if you wish to check any of your previous marks, you can just click on the exam results option. Now, as this student is new, so of course he'll not be able to see any of the records available over here. Once you have appeared for the assignments and exams and the marks have been uploaded, accordingly, you'll find the marks bifurcation, that is for assignments and exams uploaded over here. Now, if you wish to apply for maybe, you know, an alternate ID card or maybe a book. So we have certain options available for you. You just need to take your cursor onto the option of student support. Click on the option of service request. Now, as you can see, there's a drop down list available. You just need to choose the desired option from here. If you wish to change your DOB, you can do that. Change in name. Change in the photograph, the photograph which is available over here in the portal. You can do that as well. Or maybe a duplicate fee receipt, a duplicate I card, duplicate study kit, or maybe a single book. You can choose any of the options available from the drop down and accordingly proceed. Any updates, any communications received from NMIMS, be it for the assignments or for the exams, shall be made available over here. You just need to click on this option and you can check the recent updates. For example, as of now, we have the assignment submission live for the current semester. You just need to click it over here. You can find the deadline, which is 29th of May. So this was a small overview of the portal. Okay, so students, oftentimes we tend to forget a password which we have used for the student's own login. In that case, just need to open our portal again. Now we can see an option of forgot password underneath. We just need to click on that. We need to enter our student ID or SAP ID. Once done, I have to click on get my password. Once I do this, my registered email will be receiving an email of NMIMS, which will be having my old password, which I have used while I had logged in. I just need to take that password. Again, enter my SAP ID and the password, which I have received over my registered email and then proceed to login. Students always remember your registered email ID on which you receive all the communications, be it for your lectures, assignments and exams will always be this email ID, which is mentioned underneath your name. Even for the forgot password option, you will receive the communication on this email. In case you want to change this email, like I mentioned, you can go to the option of my profile, go to the option of contact information, and you can always change your email ID at any point of time. In case you wish to get the books on the new address, you can even change your address at any point of time and get the books delivered onto that particular address or location. Thank you so much students for your valuable time. And for more updates, you can always visit our YouTube channel, which is by the name of Learning Roots Official, which would be by this name. And Learning Roots Official happens to be the official enrollment partner of Narsimonji University. Thank you so much.